uh, Angelos Dolopas, who is the CMI member uh, from Greece, uh, based in Athens. Um, and our topic today is making the business case for a mentoring program. So I'm supposed to start the lead on this and I will uh, come in and from time to time okay. and I will be um, participating primarily. But for now, um, over to you. Thank you very much, David. Uh, should I say some things about uh, CMI or would you rather do the introduction for that? Um, Oh, okay, I could just say, yes, Coach of Engineering International is a global network uh, of people in 40 countries who have uh, a compelling interest in good practice in in, uh, in the training and development of mentors and mentees and the development of mentoring programs. Okay, that's probably an, enough to start with. Uh, let's take it away. Okay, should I uh, say, uh, <coughs> say something you should, about... Tell me about yourself. Yes, please. Okay, yeah. So, uh, David uh, wrote, so good morning from uh, to everybody from me, from Athens, Greece. Uh, my name is Angelos Dorlopas, and um, just a few words as an introduction. Uh, David role, as he says, is to ask bloody difficult questions as a mentor or coach, and as a researcher, as a facilitator of good practice in boardrooms, and as a practice leader in international consultancies. Dave Kotobuk Partnership, DCP, and Coaching and Mentoring International, the CMI, who is specialized in supporting organizations in developing mentoring and coaching programs and in establishing sustainable mentoring and coaching cultures. DCP also offers consultancy and training in systemic talent management. Everything David does revolves around helping people and organizations harness the power of dialogue to have the conversation that will bring about positive change. David has written or co-written more than 70 books. He is a visiting professor to the coaching and mentoring faculties of Henley Business School, Oxford Brooks University, Sheffield Hallam University, and York St. John. In 2011, he was voted Coaching at Works Magazine Mentor of the Year. He co-founded the European Mentoring and Coaching Council, for which he is now the International Special Ambassador. And a few words about me. I am, uh, as David said, uh, the, the uh, partner of CMI in Greece. I am a leadership coach uh, with uh, almost 10 years experience in coaching and mentoring and overall 30 years in business. And um, my aim here in Greece, uh, I started um, positivity coaching the company uh, around almost 10 years ago uh, for the reason to offer high-level professional coaching and mentoring services and education to the market. I have authored, designed and authored, uh, created programs by ISCF, uh, two ACSDH ones and several NCC ones. And I have also led a team of professionals who designed an educational coaching program at the National Center of Public Administration in Athens. And this way, we introduced coaching to the Greek public sector for the first time. I am a founding member and past president of the ICF Greece chapter, and I'm currently serving as subject matter expert in ICF Global Job Analysis Task Force. My job is to train coaches, coaching trainers, mentor and supervise them. And uh, I am somehow a frequent speaker in coaching conferences in Europe and Asia. Some of my talks were in London, Istanbul, Mumbai, Nicosia, and of course Athens. I have received the Global Coaching Leadership Award in 2013, the Bronze CSR Award in 2015, and the 100 Best Global Coaching Leaders Award in 2017. I have postgraduate studies in both business administration, MBA, and psychology and MSc. And I've studied. Uh, coaching here and abroad in the UK and the US. I'm a certified mentor coach, a team coach supervisor, and a professional certified coach credential through the International Coach Federation at the PCC level. Uh, so, good morning again, everybody. And uh, we can now move to the first slide of our program, which is making the business case of, for a mentoring program. We have uh, scheduled a Q&A session at the end of, uh, towards the end of the webinar, approximately 10 minutes. And now to start off our slides, 
is um, the first is the key elements of the business case, which are of course strategic, the culture change, return on investment, communication, supporting key business issues, and the corporate social responsibility. So these things are the topics that we will expand on today. But first we need to understand who are we trying to convince. Like all developmental interventions, making the case for investment in mentoring is not necessarily straightforward. The chain of cause and effect may be distorted, especially if the mentoring program is just one part of a larger initiative or package of initiatives, for example, as one of a number of support measures from promoting diversity or as part of a graduate induction program. Nonetheless, these are sufficient cases of very there are sufficient cases of very specific benefit from mentoring programs and relationships to produce a very strong case to all key audiences, which are the top management, line managers, HR, potential mentors and mentees, and other stakeholders, for example, shareholders. For all these, the two basic questions are how do I know the investment of time, energy, and or money is worthwhile? Why do I need to invest in a formal support structure or relationship rather than let mentoring happen naturally and informally? David, do you want to expand on this one? Would you like to... Uh... Hello? Yes, we can hear you. I Would can't you like... hear you. We're losing the signal. Sorry. Uh... To come in and sit. I think all of these audiences are absolutely critical. Um, and we do know, for example, in terms of other stakeholders, that the mentee's um, the immediate line manager uh, is, is, is a critical person, but also the peers around them. So how they position the mentoring relationship vis-a-vis -vis their, their peers, it, it seems to have um, either a positive or a negative effect on, on the relationship. Um, but everybody, but it's, it's quite clear that if everybody understands the value and the benefit and the purpose of the mentoring program, then it is much more likely to succeed. In one large, it's a very large scale um, research uh, project that we did some years ago, uh, uh, we found that there was a clear link between people understanding why the organization wanted to do it and the overall success of the mentoring. So back, back to you, Anjos. Uh, thank you very much. So uh, let's start to analyze each one and let's see first what the top management needs to know is uh, how mentoring will contribute to achieving the bottom line. What is the impact on supporting critical change? How does mentoring link with other interventions such as coaching, training, agile teams, and how it will help them personally, for example, by keeping in touch with thinking at other levels in the organization, rehearsing difficult messages, etc. Mentoring can work in most organizations, regardless of size, culture, or market sector. It can communicate to employees far more fully the complexity of procedures and the unique nature of the company than any formal training course, induction booklets, or company manual. Mentoring enhances the ability of both the mentor and the mentee, so the organization gains through increased efficiency. Companies with formal, long-standing mentoring programs claim tangible increases in productivity, and efficiency. Intangible benefits include improved staff morale, greater career satisfaction, and safer getting up to speed when mentored managers are inserted into a new job. Another significant impetus behind mentoring is the cost, not in cash terms. Mentoring is not a cheap alternative when you take into account the value of management time, but in saving expensive off-site courses which take employees away from productivity activity for weeks on end. The primary rewards to a company of a mentoring program are easier recruitment and induction, improved motivation, management of corporate culture, leadership development, succession planning, improved communication, and improved retention of employees. David, would you like to add something? Here. That that sounds that's that's a pretty comprehensive uh, list list there. Uh, the one thing I, I would add to this is that um, one of the things that um, we find that uh, is really helpful for for very senior uh, people in organisations is that mental actually links them with that with uh, with people from a different generation. Uh, and uh, and this um, and then it, one wonderful quote that I heard was uh, 
what I like great about uh, what's really great for me being a, um, a senior uh, leader uh, mentor is that uh, I, I get I have all these people friends in low places who can tell me what's really going on in the organization that's brilliant so can I can I go on please thank you so the next one is about line managers what do the line managers need to know <clears throat> first of all it's what's in it for me I think this is not this does not come to a surprise how mentoring will reinforce their own efforts to develop talents in their teams and how it will enable greater delegation so what what is what is surprising is how little attention is paid to the line manager as a stakeholder in the mentoring relationship or sometimes yet he or she can make it or break it so all too often line managers only see the downsides of having a direct report mentored the mentee will be taking more time away with from his or her work for mentoring meetings and the question in their minds is what are they saying about me so the latter is a very valid concern as a good working estimate at least 90 percent of mentoring pairs spend some time discussing the mentee's relationship with his or her boss this seems to hold broadly true at all levels from new recruits at the lowest levels to chief executive line managers of mentees and effective mentoring schemes comment on the following benefits the value of having a second opinion from someone independent who does not have a direct involvement in the mentee's work, the improved self-awareness of the mentee, better relationships between the mentee and their peers and with the line manager himself or herself, and finally, greater clarity, greater sense of purpose and direction from the part of the mentee. So I think these are all good arguments for what the line managers need to know, what they need to be assured of in order to give the green light. David? Just to, say, just to add on this, that, that, that when line managers understand the, the benefits for themselves and are, and are positive towards the relationship, we find the mentees get a lot more out of it as well because the mentors can actually positively say, why don't you talk about this or that with your, with your, uh, with your mentor? Uh, and this is not necessarily an application. It's basically helping, uh, it's showing support. Um, and the main line manager, clearly from all the reasons we've just said, benefits from this as well. It also means, of course, that, uh, that they are much more aware of, their, of, of the need that they should not try and interfere or try and delve into or, or, or question the mentee or the, or, the, or the mentor about what the uh, conversation is all about. So that they can respect the privacy of the relationship. Thank you very much. Now the next one is about what the HR needs to know. How mentoring integrates and with other people processes such as appraisal, coaching, training, actual learning and fast knowledge transfer. David, would you like to say some a few words yeah. about fast knowledge transfer here? The fast knowledge transfer or FKT is something that's emerged um, uh, as a phenomenon in the last, um, it, probably in the last, last five or six years in particular. <clears throat> now, a number of org organizations have, have, have uh, for example, with, by which they mean that you're just linking a few people together so that they can exchange some information on, on an ad hoc basis when they need it. And that's got some real advantages. It gives you speed and response. Um, it's, it, it gives you access to somebody with very specific subject matter expertise. Um, and it's it's you know, it's a one night stand if if you like it's sort of Tinder information exchange, um, uh, but it's not mentoring uh, because um, it doesn't have any elements of two way men two way learning. Uh, it joke focuses only on specific problem, not on the learning that the mentee can apply to other circumstances. Um, it doesn't it do, it offers technical knowledge but not self knowledge. Uh, it doesn't involve any role modelling or, um, as mentoring does. Uh, it, it needs to much. It doesn't need to very, very um, deep levels of change in the thinking and behaviour, uh, and so and so forth. Uh, it never. It doesn't really get behind the presented issue. It just deals with the issue that the person brings. So fast knowledge transfer isn't really mentoring, um, but it's something that organisations are adding into their mix as an important part of helping people get the information they need when they need it. Um, uh, and I think that in keeping the, keeping this apart as a separate activity from mentoring is important rather than confusing one with the other 
because if you if people think that fast knowledge transfer is mentoring then that devalues the mentoring uh, program and the mentor relationship significantly and that makes it much harder to make them successful well this is very important especially here as uh here in Greece um we continually we are observing uh, so-called mentoring projects mentoring programs which are in my opinion just fast knowledge transfer there are just fkt and it's uh impressive and uh, frustrating and and i wonder you know what they do here david uh, a lot is uh, they just uh, want to have uh let's say four sessions with someone who has already done that and uh, ask them to they ask him to tell uh what to do exactly so what are your advice for people who are involved in uh, a kind of program that they call mentoring so they can distinguish if that is truly mentoring or if it's just fkt has knowledge transfer uh, i think the key thing is simply to distinguish between the two that one is a transaction so if fkt is a transaction uh maybe it has several meetings whereas mentoring is a relationship and that and it's, it's longer term much deeper and and creates real change in the individual so there's a, there's um, just giving someone some information is one thing giving helping somebody to make significant changes in in how they view their career and how they pursue their career and that's something good. so i think it, it's basically uh being very clear that uh, about the difference between these things and the different value that they bring um, it may well be that a mentor can point the mentee in the direction of a number of sources of fast knowledge transfer and that's great um, but um it, it, but they're not substitute mentors so being having real clarity i think is the, is, 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 is 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 critical if we're going to get the real benefits out of mentoring yes and uh i can understand that some uh, the people who are designing and uh, administering these uh, programs uh, have some arguments for that uh, usual arguments could be that the mentors do not have enough time to uh, give uh, more than five four sessions the other one that uh, we could argue is that these mentors do not have the mentor skills or don't don't have of course the, uh, the training they need to you know it's not just about uh, I guess you will say that as well. Uh, they don't have that. They might have the expertise, the um, the status. Uh, they have made the accomplishments in their business or life, or in the combination of both. And um, they have the will to help or uh, um, young people who are aspiring entrepreneurs for example uh, and on the other hand i think the other mm, argument which i would not say that is that's a good argument is that uh the mentees don't want to do the work they just want to get the knowledge <laughs> and perhaps this is based on the overall the big assumption that uh, i know how to do everything i'm very capable uh, i just want the information and to some extent, it's fine that they that they do get that information, but they're not entering into a relationship with that. It's just, and I mean, that's the distinction between relationship and 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 a, and a, and a transaction. Um, and I think we basically, you know, it depends what we want as an organisation. But if you're going to have F FKT, you have to remember there is nothing in FKT for the person who's giving that information. There's no reward for them at all. Uh, um, as a minor level of recognition that they're an expert, uh, and that may boost their ego a bit. Um, but what we find is that as that, that people in organizations eventually begin to re to um, to uh, feel resentful about their time constantly be taken up asking questions somewhere, but they sometimes regarded as silly questions um, from more junior people. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of organizations have now had to re uh, re uh, resort to creating mentor group mentoring instead of individual mentoring. To cover, yes. to cover the footage of people willing to put the time into it. Whereas if you are a mentor, you get a lot of learning out of this yourself. 
Um, and you begin to understand the new generation. There's lots and lots of learning for the mentor, as we're going to cover in, in, in a minute. So I think you know the, the, the business case, case is, is that we want, but this is going to be create much deeper networks in the organisation. Uh, you do not get that quality of relationship from just a transactional uh, exchange of knowledge. Uh, I think probably we should move on um, into to ke keep up with time. Yes, thank you very much, David. Uh, so the second point is about uh, what the HR needs to know is how mentoring can contribute to key people issues such as retention, women returners, equal opportunities, and succession planning. And the assumption is that the entire HR community will be actively supportive of mentoring. It is seductive, but it's, it is often wrong. So HR business partners, for example, have a great many pressures on them. And it's not unusual for some to resist the introduction of mentoring because it's one more responsibility they have to they have got to take on. It's important to engage with the HR community generally at an early stage of planning and have a continuing dialogue with them about how its mentoring initiative will support other priorities they may have. Creating a mentoring program within HR itself can be a practical way of developing their appreciation of mentoring as an important part of the toolkit. And uh, it's 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 uh, it's helpful to remember that highly effective mentoring programs can deliver substantial learning for at least ninety five of mentees and at least eighty percent of mentors. Uh, they lead to a le at least one third high retention amongst people mentor than peers who are not. Demonstrate measurable improvements in mentee job commitment, engagement, and relationships at work, particularly their bosses. Improve and reinforce mentors' confidence and ability in coaching their own direct reports. Provide useful insights into people management undercurrents, broader issues that can lead to improvements in HR policies and processes, and give leaders greater confidence in succession plans. And in the context of diversity management, they have a clear and substantial contribution towards the achievement of equal opportunity targets and have a measurable impact on cultural awareness. Now, the experience of a wide range of international organizations indicates that getting right the balance between quality as measured by outcomes and by overall planning for money and a local adaptation requires some steps. First, understand and acknowledge what is there already. Secondly, reaffirm the business case and role of mentoring. Third, create a clear template for mentoring programs. Fourth, create a flexible but robust training program for mentors and mentees. Fifth, Develop and support a training resource and a program management resource with a real understanding of mentoring. Sixth, provide continuing support for participants and programs. Seven, monitoring and evaluating programs quality. And eight, sharing, learning, and expenses. And to move on to keep up with the time, uh, the slide that it's showing up right now, potential mentees want to know what effort they will have to put in to get what effort they will have to put in to get full value from mentoring, what are the risks, if they are any, what outcomes they can expect from career, learning, enabling, emotional, and what is the benefit to the company. And amongst the most common benefits we find across groups are obtaining opportunities to network and advice on how to grow their networks, having someone sympathetic who will understand difficult situations and help them work their way through them, someone to believe in them and their abilities, uh, help to work out what they want from their life and work and how to make the appropriate choices and uh, perhaps sacrifices, help in developing greater confidence, working through tactics to manage relationships with other people, become more comfortable in dealing with people from unfamiliar backgrounds, making sense of feedback from other sources, putting into context and deciding how to deal with it, and being given an opportunity to challenge the organization's thinking and be challenged in one so on. And I, th I don't think these are benefits you can get from FKT, right, David? Exactly. You can get none of those from FKT. Yeah. Yes. Would you like to add anything? In I, I think that's a, that's a very comprehensive list. I'm looking at the time on, on the thing, so I think we'll press ahead. Okay. Let's move on. Potential mentors, what do they what do they want to know? They want to know what's in it for me, what are the risks, if there are any, and what is the benefit to the company? And uh, I have to say that all the surveys and reviews that have been conducted in recent years to evaluate the outcomes of mentoring programs have indicated that the most frequent and most powerful benefits for mentors are 
the learning they take from the experience, both in having to explain intuitive reasoning and in listening to a different perspective. For example, problems mentees have with their bosses often cause mentors to reflect on similar issues that their direct reports may have with them. Uh, the opportunity to take reflective space in a hectic daily schedule, the satisfaction of knowing you have made a difference to someone else, the intellectual challenge of working on issues for which you do not have to take, the personal responsibility that may take you into unfamiliar territory, and last but not least, increased skills base and reputation. Is there something that you would like to add here, David? No, I think, think not. That's that, that, that's that's pretty comprehensive, Angelus. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm sure you would like to add something to the next one, which is the strategic place <laughs> as we move yeah, on. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> which is uh, mentoring introduces. <laughs> employees to strategic thinking at an early stage of their career. And as businesses rely increasingly on attracting talent, having a good mentoring program is a significant influencer on people's choice of employer. Mentoring creates opportunities to test our strategy and confidence on people close to the action. Reputation as an employer that believes in growing its people, if you aren't using mentoring widely, it's not very credible. Okay. Well Yes, it's absolutely. There's also an, an issue of, of corporate social responsibility. We find that having um, a, a, a competence in-house in mentoring um, um, also enables you to get engaged with uh, social programs, uh, for example, with the immigrant populations, with people um, in, in prison uh, coming up, trying to go straight, uh, with all sorts, with schools uh, and other organisations. Uh, it, it, it actually helps to build your corporate reputation overall. Um, and, um, and, and so it, it, it's, 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 and it's, it helps you basically to engage people, uh, with the street, with the, the business <coughs> strategy in an informal way rather than a formal way. And that informal discussion often changes the way that the organization, um, expresses its strategy. Sure. So in a way it's about... Yeah. It's about bringing about a continuous but slow culture change. And I think that takes us into the next slide. To the next slide, which is about culture change, of course, yes. And we say that mentoring creates the foundations for a coaching culture. Land managers use mentoring as somewhat safe to practice developmental behaviors. And of course, about role modeling, new and desirable behaviors that help to make them safe and embed them and a safe place to challenge where the organization fails to live up to its espoused values. And almost every mentoring program has a part of its objective passion on the nuances of the corporate culture. Instead of preserving cultures, companies are desperately trying to change them. And this poses a number of problems, at least that it makes it even more difficult to identify mentors with the right values. Now, mentoring, maintaining an effective developmental relationship are able to explore the differences between espoused corporate values and actual behavior. And at the same time, the mentor helps to clar clarify in the mentee's mind which aspects of the culture are fixed and not open to challenge and which are open for dialogue. At one of the world's largest and most successful merchant banks, for example, new recruits soon learn that near obsessive honesty is an immutable part of the culture, but uh, Maintaining a work-life balance on a par with integrity in the corporate value statement is honored more often in the bridge. The mentee is able to use the mentor as a role model for selected aspects of the, of the culture, while the mentor is able to use the mentee's constructive challenge to inform the continuing senior level debate on how the culture should evolve, bringing mentors together from time to time to continue their skills development and review relationship progress within the bounds of confidentiality, of course, has proven valuable in changing how the organization tackles important issues relating to culture and establishing mentoring relationships helps build trust and overcome cultural differences and has helped a number of organizations cultivate a culture strongly supportive of individual and team excellence. Improving leadership skills in mentors and growing confidence Competence and engagement in mentees 
makes people better skilled and more self-aware and positively impacting the overall organizational performance. And back to you, David. Yeah, I just give a, a couple of examples. Um, the um, one one example relates to um, to taking everybody off on a um, uh, every, all the top two hundred in this organization, a, a large manufacturing organization. The top two hundred had all gone uh, away to a university to learn about customer uh, and relationship management and try and change the culture from a sales culture to a customer relations management culture. Um, and the biggest problem was that people didn't have experience, uh, or many of them didn't actually have the practical hands-on experience of doing this, were really struggling. So the mentoring program helped those who who, who had that mindset and had developed it o- over the years to work with others and, 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 and be role models for them in, in, in achieving that, cu- that, that cultural change at an individual level so that it could be uh, in, in better embedded at the corporate level or across the, the, the top two seven, at two hundred. Hundred, um, uh, we 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 see uh, we, we, um, one of the pro- projects we're working on at the moment um, is to help an organisation moving into agile um, te- um, processes and scrum te- um, and scrums um, uh, to uh, respond fast to change. Um, that requires uh, somebody to act in the role of coach, and the problem that they have is that the people who are, who are supposed to be taking on these roles don't have enough coaching and mentoring skills. So. Um, by making them mentors initially, we begin, we were able to change the way that they think about how the, the kind of conversations they have with other people within the scum teams. And that helps them to, to, to actually move into, the, into their coaching role simply because in, in the mentoring, there's less threat um, role. So they can do that outside of this team they're supposed to be working with. Then they can transfer their skills into that. That team so mentoring is 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 is, is, is uh, actually really helping the nature or to support uh, quite a radical change in the way the organization works and by changing the way people think and the way that we do things around here so by changing the culture okay okay should i move on thank you david please sir and, uh, yes please have yeah. yeah okay so uh one very important aspect is what about the return on investment, the ROI? So what we say that's minimum one third high retention of mentees versus non-mentored colleagues. And salespeople sell 20% more in first year. And in maternity mentoring increases proportion of those who do return and reduces time it takes for them to get back up to speed. And in the world of business and employment, it's possible to calculate approximate results in respect of for example, volumes of sales by mentees versus unmentored counterparts. It's worth noting that many measures need only be done once or at long intervals. Once a credible ratio is identified, it can be applied over a number of years. The most common measurements relate to retention. And first, what we need to do is to establish a turnover among people who are part of a mentoring relationships for both mentors and mentees and among a peer group who are not. And minimum sample size of 12 is needed in each group, and typical ranges may be between 10% and 40% higher retention among the mentees. Now, if we establish as best as we can, uh, we have uh, the, uh, to have bear in mind that the numbers may vary cons- considerably with job role and hierarchical level. But what we need to focus in those the cost of recruiting and perhaps training a replacement. Losses from the head between departure of the employee and when the replacement becomes fully operational. There may be several months with no one in the role, and even when the newcomer starts, they may need some uh, even several more months before they are contributing at full strength. The typical losses here include work not done and even loss of customers. And thirdly, systemic losses, the impact on the work of other departments or functions. David, would you like to? Yeah, it, it, it's worth pointing to one of the outliers uh, on this. We, we, we occasionally have remarkably, uh, really, really remarkable uh, results. In one uh, program uh, quite a few years ago now, we had um, a we, we had two percent of people um, in the mentoring program who um, left during the course of a twelve month uh, pro- period, um, and twenty six and a half percent. 
um, uh, to, uh, amongst people who are not mentored in the same organization, the finance and IT department. That's a re that's a remarkable and and, and it's, it's it's a one-off result, but it does indicate that the, that the 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 retention issue can be a really important one for paying for any of the cost of making and putting in a good quality mentoring program. Um, uh, and on the the maternity mentoring, it's, it's worth just saying that um, that maternity mentoring appears to be more effective for the organisation than maternity coaching, partly because it's a lot lot cheaper. And also because the people who, if they've trained properly, the mentors in the in, in, in maternity mentoring relationships who work with the returning mothers and increasingly returning fathers, and uh, because paternity leave is also now growing in many countries, um, they are able, because uh, they, have, they understand the nuances of the organization, the politics of the organization, if you like, and how things have moved on while the person has been away. They can help them to re-establish their value to the organisation much more quickly. Um, so you, it's difficult always to put, uh, put put money on on that, but you can certainly look at, at what proportion of people do return um, before both um, before you have a mentoring program for them and after. And the results are, are pretty good in all those organisations that have done those measures. Let's start with communication. Let's talk about communication, right? Now, the increased communication that our mentoring program can uh, offer is between hierarchical levels and generations, field and headquarters, functions, and cultures and cross-cultural awareness and uh, collaboration. So in a traditional senior to junior mentoring relationship, the mentee's unique position in the organization can aid in formal communications because he or she struggles several levels. For example, through the relationship with the mentor, the junior management mentee has access to and is accepted by middle management. At the same time, he or she is accepted in the lower managerial levels. Since the mentee is familiar with the language and mannerisms of both, he or she can efficiently communicate each group's ideas and opinions to the other. Rich informal communication networks improve productivity and efficiency in a company since they lead to more action, to more innovation, more learning, and sweeter adjustments to changing business needs. And it can be lonely at the top, as I say. The, the, the chance to pass information to lower levels of management restores interdependence between management levels, and it is the flow of ideas and information. The special communication network also facilitates, can facilitate easier working of other areas of management development. David? It's pretty close, closely, I think. I'll just add something about the cross-cultural awareness. Um, one of the things that we've uh, observed uh, quite clearly is that when an organization has a problem with diversity uh, or man the management of diversity, getting uh, people from different, different ethnic backgrounds into uh, into more senior roles, and of course there's a gender issue here sometimes too, um, what, what really works amazingly well in terms of changing the culture of the organization um, is linking senior people in the organization with more junior people from a different cultural background. What that does is it, 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 it sometimes we make the junior person the mentors to the more senior one, so reverse mentoring. But however it works, the, the quality, the openness of the conversation that happens um, in, the mentor, in these mentoring relationships enables the, the more senior person to see things through the eyes of somebody from a different background. And that helps them to change um, their ideas and their policy and the policies of the organization to like make them more, uh, more, more, more friendly towards different cultures. Um, and that's, and that seems to be one of the big things in shifting mindset within the organization. So that's communication. Um, let's look at some of the business issues. Yes, let's look how mentoring can support the key business issues. And uh, since we talk about reverse mentoring, let's, let's have a chance here to talk about diversity in mentoring and promoting equal opportunities and how mentoring can help new members of project teams speed up to forming, storming, norming to performing. Uh, and of course, the coaches of agile teams can also benefit from mentoring. Uh, Shall I say just something briefly? 
Yeah. yeah. Just on the on the we've mentioned the other two as we've gone along, but diversity and equal opportunities. I I think the evidence is pretty is pretty clear here that mentoring really does uh, have a big impact on diversity and equal opportunities. Um, it more than anything else that's been tried. Um, now, one of the problems is sometimes we get the confusion between sponsorship um, and mentoring. Um, and mentoring is not sponsorship. The two things are radically different in in, in, in concept. And also, radically, they're, they're radically different in terms of the relationship between the two people. Because in sponsorship, you are constantly trying to convince your sponsor that you that they should be uh, promoting you. Um, so what we're finding is is really important is to be clear is to clearly differentiate between mentoring um, and either sponsor and, and 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 sponsorship. And there's a new role which is which is evolving, and it's a it's, it's a sort of bridge between the two, which is career champions. So these are people who believe in you. Um, and uh, 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 and they're not somebody who's appointed to try to act and, and be a godfather for you. They're people who know you, who, who appreciate what you do, um, rather than than somebody at, at a distance uh, in, 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 in the clouds, as it were. Um, and so, as you as part of the outcomes of the mentoring relationship, we're finding that the people build networks, and within those networks is is a cluster of champions for them. Um, and these are informal relationships. outside of the mentoring but they're very very powerful um, and, and they like, in giving people the visibility that they need to make significant progress towards the top in organizations and particularly if they come from a different um, cultural background uh, than the majority of people in the organization so let's look at corporate social responsibility yeah. yes let's, we'll, issues. We'll, we can do that or perhaps just um let's Perhaps think of a question since we uh, defined, uh, we've made the comparison between mentoring and sponsorship. Uh, there's, there's a word that, or a buzzword that's sure. been used a lot lately, it's called mentorship. Do we want to make a, a, a clarification here what it is or it is not in comparison to, to mentoring? Is uh, What are the differences, if any? I, I don't think mentorship and mentoring seem to be used interchangeably, um, mm. uh, and um, so I don't think there's the um, it, 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 I don't think there is any significant di difference between them. Um, but obviously, people put different labels on mentoring and different labels on mentor uh, and, and mentorship. Um, this, or the whole process, the concept, whether it's mentoring or ment mentorship, people um, have different, slightly different views depending on the culture they come from. And I think we do have this problem in, in the United States. That they have mixed up sponsorship and mentoring uh, in a way that makes it uh, less effective because the two roles are in conflict. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you very much. So let's move on to uh, being uh, on time. No, the corporate social responsibility. We made a, a, a small comment earlier. Uh, the CSR is about building mentoring. Is helping build relationships with current and future customers in the community. The mentoring students can cut the cost of hiring and raises the quality of graduate intakes. And ethical mentoring prevents damage and whistleblowing. And I think though your little work is about ethical mentoring and coaching, David, isn't isn't that so? Which yes, I say particularly, the, particularly in the U, in the National Health Service in the UK, we have uh, uh, we have we have a current of one hundred and fifty ethical mentors, and these are people who if somebody feels that something is wrong but they don't know how to deal with it or they feel isolated in, in, in and 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 uh, and, I, and and don't know what to do to uh, to to change something that they feel is 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 is, is wrong um, then the ethical mentor is something they can go to and talk it through and the role of the ethical mentor is to help them with their thinking the thinking through is this an issue that is really an issue is this something that needs to be taken further if so what's the best way to, to do this how can you build a, a network around you of other people who have the same concerns and so forth? So what it's doing is is, is, is preventing the individual doing damage to their own career and also to the reputation of the organization. Um, uh, and of course, making sure that those issues, the, 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 the problems that they are highlighting do actually come to light when it's appropriate. So uh, I think this is a growing area, and any organisation which has the potential for for damaging um, 
illegal or immoral um, or unethical activities to go on uh, at lower levels or even senior levels need can, can benefit from having ethical mentors. Thank you. So to keep up with the time, the next focus is to how to maximize the ROI of the return on investment from uh, of mentoring. Uh, the first is to focus on program management. The second advice or tip is to don't stint on training and support. Get the right balance between formal and informal mentoring. And don't confuse mentoring with fast knowledge transfer. I think we will not confuse it anymore. After all, you have said. <laughs> <laughs> measure the impact for mentees, mentors, and against the business uh, objective, of course, and then link mentoring with other significant business initiatives, such as team coaching, for example. Yes, what we're seeing a please. please. We're seeing a, a big rise in 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 looking at it. How, if you don't make teams um, more effective <clears throat> and, and, and and coach teams, then it really helps if the members within that those teams are able to link their own post their own values uh, with those of the of the team itself of the purpose of the team and really the, the work of, of understanding your own values and aligning with the values of the organization um, is a role primarily more for a mentor than for, for a mentee uh, a men a, a coach can help you very often just get sort out sort out your, the things that you value but actually but make that that link then with the organ with the, the values of the collective values of the team and the collective values of the organization much more difficult to do in coaching whereas within mentoring the the mentor is within the same organization and can make and make that much easier to, to, to happen um, I think the issue on training and support it comes across time and time again like anything else if you put good time into preparing people and and and, and supporting them making sure that they can work um, it does work and if you simply put two people together it doesn't um, uh, and so it's it, it's important to invest not a great deal and we're going to come on to that in a minute it's in 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 base in making sure that when people start the mentoring relationship they understand what the role is and as they get into the mentoring relationship that there are, are all the processes in place to support them as they as they feel the need for new tools and techniques new approaches as they run into problems and more guidance on how to be more effective as a mentor um, then it's important to have all those things in place Thank you. Now let's move on to uh, some key questions. Uh, some key questions it can include: What is the cost of losing talent in Shear? And uh, what would be the savings and business impact of retaining our most talented people for an extra months or an average, for an extra twelve months on average? And uh, what could our ex co members learn from listening to younger generations? Uh, um, it has to do with the reverse mentoring. And what's the cost of the company from failure to achieve full gender, racial, and cultural equality? So I think, yes, that, that, that's right. These are some things to, to wonder upon and see if, what, what is the, the value of mentoring program. David? Yes, yeah, so certainly. These are, these, are four, these are just four of, of the many questions we could ask. But I, I think that's, they're four of the most fundamental. Yeah. Um, if we don't have this information, then we're at a, our business case is much weaker. If we do have it, it always makes for a much, much stronger business case for introducing mentoring. Okay, so we are in the last 10 minutes for, uh, and uh, we have two more slides before we uh, will open the Q&A session, if you agree, David. And, Absolutely. Uh, yes. So the next one is, what does it cost? The question, what does it cost for a mentoring pilot? So we see the side training, the ongoing support, monitoring and the measurement, the mentoring platform that we need to build, and the online information resources for one year is typically around twelve thousand to fifteen thousand euros. Yeah. Now th these figures are obviously are, are, are very very uh, broad in general, um, and that they relate to having a small number of people between twelve and twenty in your pilot program, which would be typical. Uh, sometimes it's even smaller. Uh, if it's that much smaller, you, you, then um, then the, the um, you have to work out with the, the economics of, of of engaging with the platform. But by and large, it, it, it's worth having something there that is a, that is a, a significant on result, online resource for resource for some of the training, um, uh, it, or or to have a mixture of online training and face to face training in in a workshop. It is sometimes it just isn't possible to get everybody together. 
but simply, but, but that's a sort of ballpark figure, which I think could be, is um, if you're if you're thinking about dividing that, you know, between the number of of, of, of mentoring pairs, if you've got fifteen mentoring pairs, <coughs> um, uh, and you've got mentor and mentee being trained here, you know, you're talking at, 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 at no more than at five hundred euros per person for for a relationship that's going to deliver a lot of value to the organisation. Now, of course, if you're going up to um, a um, a global mentoring capability, you're going to put a lot more things into it. Um, but, um, well, let's just look at that now. Yes. What does it cost to build a global mentoring capability? And I've said that including internal training team and the online platform, the online information resources and accreditation to the international standards for mentoring and coaching programs, the ISMCP typically is uh, 60,000 euros initial outlay and 12,000 uh, for ongoing costs. And I would say it should, it should soon be possible to accredit any internal mentors who wish to be recognized formally through the uh, ISMCP. The costs for now are known, but probably it would be about 100 euros each. Yeah. The, the reason we, we're contented about this is this is uh, going through the, uh, uh, the bureaucracy of the European Mentoring and Coaching Council, uh, looking at how uh, it's possible to uh, at, at the lowest cost possible to, to for organisations to actually accredit their own internal mentors if they have if they have enough of them um, using the international sta standards so they actually have uh, a full recognition of their competence as a mentor. Now, not every mentor is going to want to do this, and not every organisation is going to want to do it. But I think it's an interesting development that people who are putting this time and this effort in should be able to you know, have the opportunity to be recognised. For their skill um, uh, and competence in in the role, uh, and it's, uh, it's a it's a it's a welcome uh, development uh, overall, I think. So that's the end of our slideshow. Uh, and just anything else you want to say before we ask people for questions? No, thank you. Uh, first of all, it was my first time I think with who on which I co-presented, and uh, it's it has been an honor to present with you uh, all this great work you have done. And so thank you, David. And I hope there has been enough information or we have raised a good deal of questions in uh, our attendees. And we have only six minutes left. So I think from my I'm okay, uh, I think we'll better open it to the, the people who want to ask some questions. I think what is the process, will it? Uh, uh, well, well, I, the, yes. Yeah, people can unmute. The moment we've got... Um, uh, I, there's one from uh, Mar Mari Sadi. Um, uh, I find that local NGOs in Africa and Asia that I meant to have far in their but to take on the mentoring developing business models so, we, that, so they will be off foreign aid within eight to ten years and generate local in income to be sustainable long term. Brilliant. That would be wonderful. Um, so, uh, 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 and Mari's also, also pointing out that yes, uh, uh, 12 participants is, isn't a statistic significant. Uh, um, um, uh, sample size and that's absolutely correct in terms of a pilot but what we're looking at in the pilot uh, is a uh, uh, is basically a, a proof of concept uh, it's as you get into you as you get into larger numbers that you can start to look uh, in more deeply into the statistics um, but you want basically what you want um, quanti qualitative data back from and, and qualitative data does come can be very good from from a from 12 mentoring pairs, so it's not just 12 participants, but uh, um, I think this is uh, one thing for, a, for many organizations, starting small, uh, it makes sense for them economically and also in terms of just being sure that it's going to work. Uh, there's Will, uh, Andrea saying, I'm going to go, we'll be checking the slides or recording. The answer is yes. You, you, if you, um, we, we can make sure that you do get the slides and the recording. They will be available afterwards. Okay. Any, any comments from anybody here? Uh, anybody want to come on and ask a question? Um, I think we, um, I think everybody should be unmuted now. Let's have a look. Um, okay. No, we'll un I'll, we should be able to unmute everybody, I think. If not for the moment, if you can just put your um, your questions in the question in the chat chat room or the question box. Uh, 
Okay, I'm just going through unmuting everybody. So if you'd like to speak up, you please do. Okay. Somebody's definitely unmuting them. <laughs> That's right. my motto speak. Yes. Yeah. 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 The aliens are landed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the <laughs> okay, I know that is. Okay, anybody who'd like to. Anybody want to come in on this one? <laughs> Any well done working connection? I'll share about the chamber again. Yeah, I'm really good. I'm going to record you this. So that is nothing that was Okay. Well, let's see the problem with the only <laughs> Yeah, I think for me. Not my I think we're we're running towards the end of the I guess it's Yeah. I think we're we come to the end anyway. So we'll say goodbye to all of you. Thank you for sure. You do it yeah. just let us Alex. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. And thank you, Dave. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Just be in this evening. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.